Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor, Are you doing this? Okay. Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor for the online class in all things botanical medicine. If you would like to be the first on your block to know the most of what is available in terms of practice, science, and application of botanical medicine, clink below which is my new word for the combination of click and link. And you will be directed to a form which has another link to download the introductory video and handouts. A special thanks to new subscribers and all of you who comment, like, and share these videos. It really does help to spread the word. Well, it's summer here in the Northern Hemisphere and where I live, cherries and berries are bursting forth in the countryside, as well as in the markets and with the fruit sellers. What we are going to see in the coming episodes is these nutrient rich fruits and berries are also used in medicine. For this week's Herb of the Week, we're going to explore a berry I'm quite fond of, raspberry. The botanical name for this luscious fruit is Rubus edeus. In addition to being called raspberry, this berry is also called red raspberry or occasional European red raspberry to distinguish it from other raspberry species. And it is native to Europe and Northern Asia. Rubus ideas is commonly cultivated in many temperate regions. And there is a closely related plant in North America called Rubus strigosus, which is the American red raspberry. Now, raspberry plants are generally perennials, which bear biennial stems, which are also called canes, from a perennial root system. In its first year, a new unbranched stem called a primocane grows vigorously to its full height of 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Yes, folks, you heard me. And this basically means about five feet to eight and a half feet tall. And that's quite a, a large plant for such little delicious things. And it bears large pinnately compounded leaves, which have five to seven leaflets. But it doesn't always have flowers. So it's not you personally, it's just the plant. So um, I have bravely planted some raspberry seeds. And FYI, this really is a two year project to get it to fruit. So if you're in a hurry, uh, in botanical terms, I suggest purchasing seedlings at a local nursery or botanical garden. Now, in its second year, the stem does not grow taller, but produces several side shoots, which bear smaller leaves, and the flowers are produced if they flower in late spring, and each flower is about one centimeter or half an inch in diameter, and it has five white petals. The fruit is red, edible, and sweet, but a little bit tart, gives it that nice kick, and is produced in summer or early autumn. And again, if you want to impress your friends and neighbors or be really irritating the next time you are served raspberries, you can announce that in botanical terminology, a raspberry is not a berry at all, but an aggregate fruit of numerous druplets around a central core. And this should be good for uh, berries in, um, in uh, or botanical in uh, jeopardy. Now the druplets um, separate from the core. Now these are raspberry uh, species. They separate from the core when picked, leaving a hollow fruit. And you know what I mean, there's lovely little hollow fruits of raspberries. 
Whereas blackberries, and this is how you tell blackberries from black raspberries, is um, the druplets stay attached to the core. So that's the difference. Now, raspberries can be found in four different colors, red, black, purple, and gold. And red raspberries are the most common type found at the grocery store. And if you're lucky, you can find black raspberries, which seem to be very popular in the American um, South. And to me, they are especially delicious. They're a little less tart than the red kind. Um, black raspberries are difficult to find, and they're only available for a few weeks during midsummer. Now, if you go to some specialty farmers markets or farmers markets that have a lot of different types of sellers, and I'm speaking from experience in Southern California and Northern California, uh, sometimes there are specific red, you know, not red, raspberries and berry growers that will bring all the different colors. Um, now, black, wild black raspberries, and again, the the hollow, it's hollow in the central. That's how you tell the difference between a black raspberry and a black berry. But wild black raspberries grow in the northeastern United States, um, and most commercial black raspberries are grown in the state of Oregon. When I was in naturopathic school during the summer, I lived on asparagus, basil, berries, and salmon, because that's where these things are grown and caught and that sort of stuff. And it, it's very inexpensive, at least it was when I lived there. That was a long time ago. Um, and as I said, at farmer's markets, uh, specialty berry growers will have numerous types. And fresh raspberries are generally available from June to October. That's when they're harvested. But frozen raspberries are available year round and contain the same amount of vitamins and minerals. Sorry, folks, I don't think anything is more delicious than fresh red raspberries in season, just luscious. Now, fresh or frozen raspberries are a great source of fiber, vitamin C, manganese, B vitamins, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, and potassium. Now, raspberries pack a lot of nutrition into a very small space. And as I said before, they provide potassium, which is essential to heart function. They've also been proven to lower blood pressure. And the omega-3 fatty acids in raspberries can help prevent strokes and heart disease. And they also contain that mineral called manganese, not magnesium, manganese, which is necessary for healthy bones and skin and helps regulate blood sugar. Now, uh, red raspberries are fabulous for diabetes management. So if you're a diabetic or you are uh, type two, or you think you have trouble with insulin resistance, these are a good fruit to eat on a regular basis. And one cup of raspberries provides eight grams of fiber, far more than most fruits in the protose aisle. And fiber, as we know, can help lower blood sugar, it helps lower cholesterol, and it also, fiber helps lower blood pressure. In traditional Chinese medicine nutritional therapy, raspberries are considered very warm, and specifically to tonify the yang and kidney yang. So if you're yang deficient and you know who you are, raspberries are your friend. Because of this quality, raspberries are also considered an aphrodisiac, specifically for men who, well, let's say their yang is not up to the task, so to speak. And I can tell you from personal and clinical experience, feeding raspberries to men really does perk them up in the bedroom, especially if you mix raspberries with chocolate. So, the, the grand competition in the rubus world is between black and red raspberries. And black raspberries are also known as black caps, 
or thimbleberries. And they're a species of raspberry. And again, you can see in this slide, the center of the droop fruits, uh, it's a hollow core. And that's how you can tell the difference between a blackberry and a black raspberry. Um, both red and black raspberries are small. They have a hollow center and they're covered with small little white hairs. And both types have a similar flavor, although some people find black raspberries sweeter and I'm one of those people. Black raspberries are higher in antioxidants and both red and black raspberries contain powerful antioxidants that can protect your cells from damage caused by high levels of those free radicals in your body. And a healthy balance of antioxidants and free radicals is necessary to maintain optimal health. Now, as I said, black raspberries are higher in antioxidants and both black and red raspberries contain powerful antioxidants that protect your cells from damage caused by those free radicals in your body. Uh, black raspberries are higher than the red variety in particular. Now, black raspberries have high levels of polyphenols, which are plant compounds that have antioxidant activities and provide those health benefits. And that's why uh, nutritionists tell you to eat lots of them. And these are the main polyphenols that are present in both black and red raspberries. So you've heard me talk about anthocyanins. Um, the, you've heard me talk about these substances before. And they're what make red, purple, orange, yellow, and blue fruits and veggies so healthy. And they do anything you can imagine to help the body be more healthy. Now the elogotannins, also called elogic acids, these are the chemicals that make berries and pomegranates so helpful at both preventing and treating cancer. Raspberry in general, but black raspberry in particular, is one of the highest sources in nature of this healing substance. And phenolic acids, these are plant phenolics that are considered to be really important in your diet. And they also have a high antioxidant activity. And there are studies that suggest a diet rich in these uh, phenolic acids. Uh, they reduce risk of many oxidative stress-related diseases, such as cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular. And what I also want to say, as particularly with cardiovascular disease, it's usually the big bugaboo is cholesterol. And so when you go to the doctor and you get your blood work done and they tell you your cholesterol is too high and you need to stop enjoying life, it's not really the cholesterol, it's what we call oxysterol or oxidized cholesterol. So cholesterol is a natural substance. It actually helps your body heal in many instances, but if it's oxidized by too many free radicals and stress in your body, that's what causes things like heart attacks and strokes. So if you're eating a diet full of fresh fruits and vegetables, especially multicolored diet, which is high in anthocyanins and berries is elagotannins and phenolic acids and antioxidants. This helps prevent your cholesterol from being oxidized. And that's why it's good for your heart. So the high levels of antioxidants in raspberries also may explain their potential cancer fighting properties. And again, the multicolored fruits and vegetables have high concentration of these substances. And this is why nutritionists and governments are trying to get people to eat a rainbow diet. And when I say rainbow, I mean the traditional multicolored rainbow, all those lovely colors in a rainbow. And this means your diet has lots of uh, colors in it. 
Now, most modern humans, particularly Americans, eat a lot of white and brown food, which may be yummy, but not necessarily good for you. That's why you need to eat colored foods. And while you can enjoy black raspberries fresh, um, most commercially grown black raspberries are used in specialty foods such as jams, purees, or used to make products like dietary supplements and natural food coloring because they're high in all those different things. Now, this is a lovely little chart I found on Science Direct, and it shows um, the sources of phenolic acids in different fruits and vegetables. And as you can see, uh, chestnuts are probably the highest uh, concentration, but those blackberries, black raspberries, the straw, you know, all these things, that it's really good for you, particularly black raspberries. So if you can get them or start growing them, I highly suggest it. Now, the medical benefits of red raspberries can be applied to both the droop fruit as well as the leaves. And this is a little chart on what the leaves are good for. And anyone who has ever been pregnant or works with pregnant women knows about raspberry leaves. This is kind of like the go-to herb for pregnant women and nursing women. So here's some of the benefits of the leaves. It's a good source of protective antioxidants. It also helps digestion. Uh, if you gargle the tea, it helps to relieve mouth ulcers, uh, ease sore throats, and helps with gum diseases like periodontal diseases. It alleviates inflammatory conditions. Um, it also has some hormone normalizing properties. So it can help with menstrual cramps and water retention. Uh, it also is a uterine tonic, and that's why midwives for centuries had women drinking cups of this tea because it helps tonify and prepare the uterus for birth, which is quite, quite a feat. Giving birth is a big deal. And it's also uh, good for the very late stages of pregnancy. It eases morning sickness and it assists in childbirth by drinking it. Now, some of the older herbals suggest gargling with raspberry leaf tea for sore throats. And they also use it as a wash for cuts, scrapes, and small surface wounds on the skin. Raspberry leaf tea, as I said, is considered a uterine tonic and is very helpful uh, for late stages of pregnancy. And it's also good at increasing milk production. And you'll find it in many of those, um, you know, uh, prepared teas that you can buy at health food stores. Now, there's several ways to take raspberry. You can take it either as a concentrate of the droop fruit or different way, different uh, preparations of the leaf, either bulk or in tea, in, uh, tea bags as a tea. You can take them in capsules, tablets. You can also take it in a tincture form and you can take isolated aspects, as you can see in this label, the raspberry uh, ketones. <clears throat> now, while raspberries are good for you, sometimes to get a therapeutic dose, you'd have to qu eat quite a bit of them. And this is not always possible. Now, the tea can be purchased loose as leaves and tea bags, and make sure the product is 100% leaves if you're just wanting raspberry leaf. And as I said, in tablet or capsule form. <clears throat> Alternatively, you can make your own tea using dried raspberry leaves. You simply add a teaspoon of dried leaves to a cup of hot water, steep it for five minutes, strain and drink those, this lovely concoction. The astringency, those uh, tannins in the leaves produce a similar taste to black tea. Uh, but without the caffeine. And sometimes, as again, you need to read those labels, ladies and gentlemen, because the tea might have a sweeter tasting herb such as peppermint in it. Now, raspberry ketone 
is a chemical that is found in red raspberries and other fruits. And it is used as a supplement for obesity, not to cause it, but to cure it. And it's believed that raspberry ketone might increase metabolism, which means it increases how quickly the body burns fat, and it also helps to reduce appetite. Now, this may reflect the yang tonic aspect of the droop fruit, and other yang tonics like cinnamon are also helpful with metabolism and sugar metabolism. So this may be how that yang tonic works. Um, raspberry ketone is also found in other things uh, such as kiwi, peaches, grapes, apples, and other berries. It's also in rhubarb and the bark of the yew, maple, and pine. Now, people use raspberry ketones for weight loss. Uh, they also use it for hair loss, male pattern baldness, and other conditions. But the medical and scientific community is not sold. So if you look this up, they'll say there's no proof that this works. And so, but all I can say is it's a good seller. And so people must be happy with the results. So I will leave it up to you, my viewers. And as always, check it out with your physician and pharmacist, especially if you're on any sort of obesity drug. And there's a lot of ones coming out on the market right now. Um, and a lot of these drugs, they, there's a, quite a lot of risk involved with them. So you need to make sure if you're mixing a supplement, which is a concentrated form and an isolated form that won't uh, counteract the drug or potentiate the drug and do not so great things. So always check with a qualified herbalist, your physician and pharmacist, if you're on any kind of drug using any kind of herbal supplement. As I said earlier in the video, I'm trying to grow raspberries from seeds and it is a very slow process. So um, I don't have a lot to say personally about doing this other than it's taking forever. So I have a link in the program notes on how you can grow them. They're a wonderful ground cover, especially on a shaded slope or in containers. Now for me personally, I really enjoy eating fresh raspberries, uh, but you can get them in all sorts of ways, frozen, jam, dried in syrups and preserves. And I have a link in the program notes on some great recipes, but note, most of these recipes are delicious, sweet things like trifles and, and bars. And uh, raspberries are not going to balance out the sugar and butter in these treats. So if you want the true nutritional benefit, don't eat trifle, eat fresh or frozen berries. And you can put them in your yogurt. You can eat them plain. And it's probably uh, wonderful to put them into smoothies and to get the best, most out of them. So however you wish to enjoy this amazing gift of summer in whatever color or concoction in leaves, through tea or the berries in a trifle, raspberries are truly a wonderful addition to your garden, your meals and your medicine cabinet. So this is Stephanie Georgia saying, thanks so much for sharing your valuable time with me. Clink below for a free introductory lesson for the online course. And until next time, be well.